first started playing percussion professionally in pop music settings, I was all about the drums. I soon learned that although the drums are very important, most of the time a percussionist in a pop band plays shaker or tambourine, and sometimes both at the same time. So how do you keep it interesting with the tambourine? How do you make it feel good with the groove? Let's get into some of the types of tambourines and I'll demonstrate some common techniques with some tips on how to make it feel right and sound good. This is a traditional tambourine and they're classic. Most of them feature a wooden frame with a head on one side and a single or in this case a double roll of jingles. These are known for their versatility and you'll find it in various genres of music from orchestral settings to pop bands. Hold it on the shell of the tambourine with uh, your thumb on the outside and your fingers on the inside. For dry hits, bring your fingers together and use a wrist stroke to strike the tambourine head. If you want the jingles to jingle a little bit after the strike, hold the tambourine more vertically and listen and make adjustments. You'll notice that there's different sounds depending on whether you're in the center or toward the edge of the head. Like most tambourines, you can shake it to make a roll, but you can also, since it has a head on it, use a thumb or a finger to do a thumb roll. Rub your hand across the tambourine head such that it bounces and skips along the head. My thumb is often a little too dry, so I lick it to achieve a consistent skip and a roll. However, this can be a bit gross. Disgusting! So the better option for more consistent and hygienic results, you can use wax along the edge of the tambourine. It may take some time to perfect this technique. I know, I'm still working on it myself, but it will come with time and practice. Unlike the traditional tambourine, this one doesn't have a head, allowing for different sound and playability. It's a favorite among percussionists who use it for both shaking and striking it, either with the hand or an implement like a drumstick. When you shake a tambourine back and forth, Try to use your wrist and relax your arm as much as possible. If you get tired, your arm may tense up and the rhythm often becomes inconsistent. Plus, it's not healthy for your arm, wrist, or hand. If you want to incorporate some accent hits into the shaking, you'll need to consider the meter of the song and which beat gets the accent. Commonly, we accent the back beat, so if it's in 4-4 or any type of duple meter, you can start the shake toward the hand you'll strike for the accent. This places it in the direction of the hand you're gonna strike for the accent when you need to hit the accent on the beat. If the meter's in 3-4 or 6-8, any type of triple meter, you'll need to start the shake away from the hand you want to strike for the accent. If you have a favorite type of tambourine or a technique you love, let us know in the comments below. The rick originated in the Middle East, and it's an Arabic instrument. It's essentially an Egyptian tambourine. It's held in the cabaret style vertically with one hand and played with the fingers on both the head and the jingles. The traditional way to hold it would be two hands and you play with your fingers like this. The jingles are very dark and dry compared to some of the other tambourines that I've shown you. For the rick, there's four main sounds, the doom, the tak, the pa, and the tek. The doom, the tak, the pa, and the tek on the jingle. If you're interested in developing technique and rhythms on this instrument, search for Rick R-I-Q-Q -Q, tutorials on YouTube. There's several channels with very good instruction from percussionists who specialize in Arabic tambourines and other Middle Eastern frame drums. Speaking 
of world music, uh, the pandeiro is a Brazilian tambourine that brings a lively and vibrant sound to the table. It has a head and features jingles in a particular set, producing a rich and dynamic sound that's distinctly Brazilian. So what's so special about these jingles? Uh, it, it's, they're, they're very dry, and, and how dry they are uh, comes from the fact that there's two concave uh, jingles facing each other with a flat jingle in between. The pandeiro can encompass many of the crucial rhythms of samba, like the high and low sounds of the surdo, as well as the ganza and other Brazilian instruments to make that dark shaking sound. To hold the tambourine, I grip it with my thumb on the top edge of the head and the fingers inside on the inside of the shell or frame. I use my middle finger to dampen the head from the bottom, but some percussionists will use their pointer finger. Mine's very short and this is a heavy pandeiro, probably a little bit too heavy and too big for me. Some only change the pitch of the instrument with their thumb on the top. So, like I mentioned about the Rick, there's a lot of great percussionists on YouTube who specialize in pandeiro, so I suggest watching their videos to get you on the right course with this tambourine. This is the part of the video where we start to break away from the round tambourine concept, like this one. The jingle stick. It's simply a stick with jingles. But there are two different designs. The jingle stick with more of a tambourine design, and then there's also a pair of drumsticks with jingles attached to them. So if you're searching for jingle sticks, you'll find both of those designs. I had a broken tambourine, so I drilled some holes and attached the jingles to the sticks with a small nail that I bent to the side to keep the jingles on. I chose a nail because a screw would make it harder for the jingles to slide up and down. If you have any DIY suggestions for tambourines and jingles or a way that you made a jingle stick on your own, let us know in the comments. So there's other things you can do with tambourines. Uh, I really like what Meinl has done with these rings, you can put them anywhere. You can put them on a drum, you can put them uh, on, a, on a bell of a cymbal. Um, you can do, you can shake them like a tambourine, right? That's what it is. Also very common and far more popular um, over the past several decades is, is a tambourine that'll go on a hi-hat stand, right? Right down the rod um, where it'll make the chick sound as you're playing, but also when you play the cymbals with your foot. Also, this is a, a big fat snare drum uh, jingle topper and it's a snare drum topper and it makes a jingle sound when you play it. It's very simple. I like the jingle toppers for snare drums so much that I made my own for a 12 inch drum and use them almost every pop gig I play. One more toy that I really like, and it's kind of new to my arsenal, I haven't done a lot with it, but I will, is the Rim Chick. The Rim Chick, this is by Native Tongue Percussion. It clamps to the side of basically any rim. Um, and they also have like cowbells and uh, jam blocks, and I'll put a, a link to those videos up here in the cards um, showing what I do with the cowbells, the, the blocks on drum set, and with conga drumming. But this is a really cool way to um, enhance your sounds as you're playing auxiliary percussion. So it's really fun, it's cool, it sounds really good uh, with a variety of different styles of music as well as uh, with its um, 
other related components like the cowbell and the block. If you like this video, check out these videos over here suggested to you by YouTube. And if you want more from Rhythm Notes, click this link. It takes you to a page with a sign up for my newsletter as well as the Rhythm Notes Patreon where you can access the full lesson PDF library and receive weekly tips.